people have to understand when they take their orders from the other side, they come and do everything to apply it. It is shameful. We are called Puchis. We are not French. We do not understand what that means. And the local people, who surely do not even understand the profound meaning of the word, also call us puchas. Very well, we appropriate it. People have to understand. When they take their orders from the other side, they come and do everything to apply it. It is shameful. We are called Puchis. We are not French. We do not understand what that means. And the local people, who surely do not even understand the profound meaning of the word, also call us Puchis. Very well, we appropriate it. Over the years, as far as Burkina Faso is concerned, you may have noticed, all the bodies have been destructured. No more training, nothing left for the army. They imposed in all our major states, all our schools and all our strategic structures, what they called military councils. When we revolted on September 30th, 2022, the first thing was to find out who these military councils were and where they were. So we were able to identify that the evil was deep. And the first thing was to ask them to leave our army. They left. And what I told you not long ago, you cannot hope to find your lost object by calling on the one who stole it to come and help you find it. When we asked the military councils to leave, we felt manifestations. We were made to understand that we would not be able to get by without them. And every time they told us, it was translated by attacks on the ground. We received the message well. At the dawn of the year 2023, we decided to tell the foreign forces present here to leave. Because we want to fight in Burkina Faso. They did not surely appreciate it, but why come and die on our land for us? We prefer to fight ourselves. We ask them to return home. Unfortunately, I tell you here today, as I like to say, colonization has returned. There are slaves of Salon who still have not understood. In the meantime, Military officers wrote to us and approached us to tell us that it was a very bad decision and that we would not last two months. Files were written. We were sent these files to make a strategic analysis of their thoughts. We said either we are sovereign or we remain slaves forever. Indeed, when the last soldier left Burkina Faso, we understood what it was about. The attacks followed immediately. Dehao, Timnakov, Partiaga, and so on. But what they had forgotten was that the people of Burkina Faso had understood our message. and had engaged in the same way as we did. We reorganized quickly, 
And suddenly we noticed that all the sleeping terrorists had woken up in Burkina Faso. We reorganized the army as quickly as possible. At an unequal speed, we have created several units, and even if several others are yet to come, we have equipped them. And today this equipment continues because in the days to come, the months to come, what you will see coming to Burkina Faso must make our army a power to fear. We will not hesitate about the means. We understood that the fight against imperialism will be hard, very hard. But only the hard ones will pass, and the Burkinabes are hard, and we will pass. We have put on guard for more than a year the local valets, the slaves of Salon, so that they do not betray their country for the benefit of imperialism. Some have understood and organized themselves. Others have not understood. Maybe they thought they were smarter. But today, we have no more feelings about this theft. Whoever betrays his country for the benefit of imperialism, he will be treated as such. Much respect to Burkina Faso, much respect to Ibrahim. They have demonstrated to the world how impactful it could be when people pull together, when people are united in cause, when people are united in purpose. They have demonstrated to the world. The man of the community decided to take matters into their own hand. No longer did they want to rely on another people. And that is a good thing. Because many people talk about how every man is created equal, but no one questions the structure of our society in the Caribbean. We don't question the fact that slavery ended in 1834, almost 200 years ago, but the same people are still in charge. The same people are still controlling the Caribbean while living miles away. How are they doing it? They're doing it because they have their house slaves or the slaves of Salon, as Ibrahim called them. These people, ever since slavery ended, has been placed in the government strategically. And they are the eyes of their masters. They are the ones who would run off and tell them everything. Their purpose is to keep the people blinded. But Burkina Faso realized this was happening and so they investigated and to their surprise the imperialist regime had embedded themselves in every strategic infrastructure government facility of their community such is the case in the caribbean don't believe that we are out of the smoke don't believe that it is cleared we are no way near free in the caribbean because if we did we would be able to travel from one island to the next just like that. If we did, other people would not be running our tourism industry. Other people would not own our power plants, our government, our education systems. Everything we rely on must come from other people. Okino Faso realized this was happening in their country and they did something about it. My thing with the Caribbean and America Many of us black men say we are not respected, but we can't put our differences aside and work together for the greater good. We can't do it. And the few people who come together, it's about religion, it's about fear. It's all out of fear. Everybody wants to debate and talk about this and that. These guys didn't have time to debate. They realized, look, there's an elephant in the room. And guess what? That elephant is a constant denominator in the Caribbean and in Africa. Everywhere that denominator is, there is issue. They impose their will on the local people. And Burkina Faso decided to put a stop to it. At one point, the Caribbean was like that. The Caribbean used to lead in that type of movement. But then the people got tricked. 
That is why Marcus Garvey had to go. After Burkina Faso realized that these military councils were embedded in every aspect of the community, they asked him to leave. And instead of these people leaving, they started coming up with excuse. Hey, we are here to fight for you. We are going to die for you. But then Burkina Faso said, look, now nah, we are men. We got this. We want to die on our own soil. We got this. Right. So they did not fall for whatever strategy these guys had. But they didn't let it go. They continued to try to send them memos and letters and everything. They even sent their house slaves to Burkina Faso to threaten them. They started with the ambush hoping that it would put fear in the people. But the people stood together. I realize that in the Caribbean, anytime people try to do something for the people, for real, then you have all these puppets that come out of the woodworks and they have something to say. They are offended because they need to suck on their master's bosom so they get really offended they don't want you to mess up their comfort they don't want you to make them feel uncomfortable but they want you to feel uncomfortable because they bow down they want you to bow down one of the most important part of his message is this in him saying that they put system in place to keep an eye on the slaves of salon or to keep an eye on the house slave and if they do anything that goes against the nation or goes against a country, then they will be treated like an enemy. The people of the Caribbean, you have to understand who really represents you. Because someone is in your government, because someone is carrying your flag, it doesn't mean that they represent you. The new people that are coming into your community, they are bonded and they are fighting for themselves. They make sure that they go to the government with recommendations that's going to benefit them. And if it somehow benefits you in some way then good but they ensure that it benefits them don't mind them kicking keen in your face and talking about it's all love and so forth don't mind them and we shouldn't trust that even if they mean it we shouldn't trust it because of our history and we need to tell them this it's all love man nothing against you because i know you cannot control those cooperations of your people that are coming here. I know you say you are not of them, that you are a different group, that you've been here many years, but guess what? I cannot tell you apart from them. So they can walk through the door and I'm thinking that it is you. So I have to take that extra precaution because you are not going to be the one who gets hurt. Got it? So if you really care, then you can possibly help me make sure that I control my sectors. Don't try to tell me to put my guards down if you care as much as you say. If you know the history like you say, then you should not want me to put my guards down because it's only you. You are the one speaking. What about the millions that are out there who have way more power than you? How is it possible that 200 years later, we are still in the position that we are in and people try to convince me that it is all about fairness, that it is equal, that all men are created equal. How can anyone with common sense and as intelligent as we say we are, with all the educations that we have, how can we not see that and say something is wrong with it? We seem to have common sense when it comes to everything else. We seem to realize when something is going wrong. We seem to be very logical when it comes to everything else. So what is the deal with this? That 200 years later, the same people still control every critical aspect of our society and nobody trying to do anything about it. You want me to be distracted by the ones who pick up your kid and kiss your kid or the ones who decided to get in a relationship with you and get babies with you or impregnate you. You want me to be convinced that it is all good. You want me to be convinced because you finally have access to their woman that it is over. You want me to ignore everything that is happening around the globe. The news that is coming out of Africa and what I see in the Caribbean and the US. You want me to ignore that because you can finally work next to them. Because you are a boss of a couple of them. Are we really that simple? 
Are we really that shallow? You can go on and be that, but I'm not going to be that. My ancestors told me not to be that. We don't think something is happening until we see teeth, until we see the house on fire. That is when we start crying. We are very reactionary type people versus proactive. And we have to try to fix that in every way possible. There's a reason why armies are out there training every day when there is no war. There's a reason why people are trying to increase their security and their systems when no one is attacking them. Even when they are the most powerful, they are doing that. So how is it we, being at the bottom, are trying to act so nonchalant and trying to put it all in Jesus' hands? Man, you better get out of here with that. Because when you go to their job, you don't say that. You actually get up and work. You don't sit at home and say, Jesus would handle it. You get up and go do it. So why should I accept the idea that we should just sit back, we can't do nothing about it, it is what it is, and that Jesus is going to handle it. But only when it comes to stuff like that. But everything else, we got to get up and do it. When it comes to wealth, when it comes to making moves in life, we like to talk about motivation. You got to get up and grind. You got to go and take action. But when it comes to us as a people taking actions to rebuild what was taken from us, we want to run to the people who took it from us for them to help us to find it. And like Abraham say, they will never help you to find it. They're going to ensure that you keep running in circles as they continue to build their empire and their fortifications so that you cannot get out of it ever again. And sadly, too many people who look like us are helping them, are working hand in hand with them. And that is why I am not with this thing where because somebody look like me, I should trust them. Because black or negroid is not just a shell. It's the roots. It's what you believe. It's who you affiliate with. It's your mindset. It is everything. I seen somewhere where a chocolate looking person said that people of African descent in the Caribbean sometimes act as if they always been there. That type of ridiculous statement. Look, it doesn't matter if we always been there or not. The atrocity that our ancestors been through in the Caribbean has branded us into the soil of the Caribbean. So the Caribbean is us and we are the Caribbean. So it is as if we've been there forever. Same thing. Anyone who came after that are settlers. We cannot go to nobody else's country and run things the way they come to our country and run things. They would not allow us to do that. You see what is happening in the UK. These people up there are mad because immigrants are going to the UK. They are complaining. But they are the ones who went all over the world colonizing everybody, stirring up the nest. And now those people who are in the nest are finally going to the UK and they are mad. You see the hypocrisy? They don't come out against each other like that. And even if they do, it is controlled. It is a trick. It is a chess move. And we need to assume it is that because we've seen it happen so many times.